Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Dead on Dave. A uh, little bit early this morning, but I want to go ahead and get a few things out there. There's some news I want to talk about, things that are making my head explode. Uh, there will be a Creator's Corner today. It will be released a little bit later on, as well as there should be a review battle. There's no reason why there shouldn't. A little bit of drama in the Vancura household uh, last night. And I'm a little bit down this morning, so I wanted to come in and address that and talk about some wrestling kind of take my mind off things and while it might not seem like a big deal to some this was a big deal to me um one of the i've been in germany for 13 years almost geez yeah wow 13 years and 11 of them well 12 of them i've been with my wife and 11 of them i uh had a couple of pets one one of them is this little baby girl right here this is my bunny starsky good 11 years had her and she died last night and uh, kind of unexpectedly and it was just a little upsetting you haven't explained that to your daughter it was the first pet that we lost as a family and it was just a really rough night and, uh, and this is my this is my pal she was a good bunny and i miss her so Kind of wanted to, I usually don't do shows this early, as most of you guys know, but I wanted to kind of take my mind off of uh, this. And what better way than bringing it up on a show in front of all strangers and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. So it's time to get Dave in the face <clears throat> because I am a wrestling robot and I need to turn off the emotions and talk some wrestling. So that's what I'm going to do now. Try not to uh, let myself be too upset this morning. And probably go take a nap and then cry later on. It's okay. It's what we do. We're Americans. So anyway, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And people are still going on and on and on about this fucking Reigns thing and this Brian thing. And it's kind of driving me fucking nuts, to be completely honest. I'm starting to... I'm losing empathy. I'm losing empathy for Daniel Bryan and, and this whole situation. I'm getting tired, and look, I love Joe Cronin. He's my he's my buddy. He's my boy. He's my partner. We we work together quite often, but he he's kind of going. He and he's not wrong when he says this. Not uh, at least not a hundred percent wrong, but I'm I'm kind of going nuts here because I'm. Why is there this standard that Roman Reigns is for non-hardcore fans, but Daniel Bryan is the only choice? For hardcore wrestling fans. That's insane. That's insane. Look. He used another term too. That, that I, I want to address. It's called feeding the machine. He's like part. He's part of the machine. Roman Reigns that is. Why is that such a bad thing? Why is it such a It's like Daniel Bryan has not had a career in the WWE or something. Because of the existence of John Cena. That's that's insane. Daniel Bryan will continue. He had, he had world. He, okay. He just got the undisputed title for not a very long time. But are we forgetting that he was world heavyweight champion? Are we are, are we completely forgetting that he's had major title runs in the past? Are we forgetting that? Are we forgetting that Daniel Bryan, during the John Cena era, has had major title runs? And there's no reason to think that they won't split up the titles again at some point and, and have that opportunity uh, for, for guys like Bryan yet again. Now, that's that's one of my little gripes I wanted to bring up. Uh, another part of that is a guy like Reigns is necessary, okay? And, and while we're on that, go watch Roman Reigns in NXT. Go watch him. Go watch Roman Reigns in NXT. The guy can work. He, it's not like he's this dude who can't work at all. He's just a robot. He's not a, No, he can work. Look, his overall package can get fucking retarded because they've written some terrible lines for him. But this is a what have you done for me lately business, okay? And what has Roman Reigns done for me lately? This is what he's done. On, on Monday Night Raw, he took a really, really tough situation uh, from the night before. And he used it. And they were able to get interview gold with him, Heyman, and Brock Lesnar. Now, you might be saying, well, that's what, that's what Brock Lesnar and Heyman, that's what's supposed to happen. Okay, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with putting him in situations where he is able to succeed and this is the reality i don't think he's going to fail in this situation with brock lesnar i think they're going to be able to work a good match together because their styles 
seem to be able to favor one each other. It should be a nice physical match. should be rather athletic, too, if you think about it. And we're going to get to see Reigns get dropped on his head a lot, too, because we know that Lesnar does not give a fuck. So there's all these things. And I also want to get to this myth that Daniel Bryan is is, is the only choice for, for the hardcore people and all this. That, that's insane, too. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that. Look, Daniel Bryan, as great as he is, he has flaws, all right? I, he has a deficiency on the mic that cannot be ignored. As great as he is in the ring, and he is great, great, not good, not good, he's great. There's no question about that. However, you cannot put all your faith, you cannot throw all of your eggs into a Daniel Bryan basket, especially when he's coming off of an injury the way he is. You put him in a main event spot and he gets hurt again. It hurts your product because that means you have to scramble yet again and change the entire entire picture up. Now look, I'm not blaming Daniel Bryan for his injury last year. I'm not blaming him for that. But because of that injury, they gave him the title run and then he got injured and they had to the, it threw the title into the the whole damn title picture into flux. Everything was crazy because of it. And there's a lot of people who feel or know have have reported that Daniel Bryan knew that these injuries were piling up and he had to get it taken care of. But Daniel Bryan being the guy he is, he shuts his mouth, he goes to work, he does his thing, he doesn't say anything, and he let the injuries pile up. He did not take care of himself properly, and eventually it cost him almost his friggin' career. Now that is is, is a prevalent thought. That is something that's poignant. That is important. It's profound. It means something. Because if it's happened before, it's certainly going to happen again. And he, he's not getting younger. He's only getting older, and these injuries are going to continue to compound. Okay, he's already changed his wrestling style because of it. So it, you have to start get, lending credence to the notion that maybe Daniel Bryan isn't the best guy to have the title at this time. Let him build back up to it. Now, look, I wasn't on board for this Sheamus Daniel Bryan match, and I believe that Daniel Bryan should probably find a way into the main title picture. And I'm saying all of this with those things in mind. However, we don't know. That Reigns and Lesnar is going to fail. We know that one crowd booed him because they were pissed off because they didn't get their way. And this comparison between Batista from last year is actually getting weaker and weaker by the day, if you really think about it. People say, oh, Batista came back and he was taking Daniel Bryan's spot, and that's why everyone booed. That is not true. It's not 100% true, at least. Two things can be true here, people. I think Batista was booed specifically because he was an old-ass freaking stu- superstar. We're talking a guy in his 40s coming back for a short run that we knew of. It was not going to be a long-term run. Getting a guaranteed title uh, a, a title contract in his uh, contract that he signed with the WWE. And he was walking right in. And that's what pissed the wrestling fans off. In, co- in conjunction with the fact that Brian was not even in the Royal Rumble last year. Now, they didn't handle things too much better this year with barely having him in the Royal Rumble. I agree with that. Completely agree. They booked the Rumble wrong as far as how they eliminated people and how they went about giving Reigns the win. They may not have been wrong with giving Reigns the friggin' win, though. They, I don't think they're necessarily wrong about that. you got to build new stars eventually. And yes, maybe they push Reigns a little bit too far, too fast. Maybe that is possible. However, we've known this is coming because we got behind Reigns last year. He was getting all the... The pops he got in the Rumble last year when he was eliminating motherfuckers was ridiculous. I don't want to hear all this. Reigns is not that over. He's, his pops are not as big as Bryan's. There are a lot of people in the comment section who are arguing that point and be trying to say that his pops, oh, I, Dave, you're, you're seeing pops or not. Go back and watch fucking Raw and SmackDown. Go watch them. Go check it out for yourself. Go watch. Because I did. I went back and I made sure maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm insane. And I went back and I looked. And the pops that this guy gets are legitimate, especially since he got back. Now, let's stop talking about the entire friggin' year and look at the, we have to look at the sample size of the most recent current events, okay? 
And the reality is, Roman Reigns, in the most recent current events, has been very, very, very friggin' over. And everybody, universally, up into the friggin' Royal Rumble, has talked about the improvement that Reigns has made within the ring. And when he's not giving these campy-ass pr- uh, promos that... Vince McMahon writes from, which, by the way, we haven't heard in a couple of weeks because it looks like they may have stopped the cartoon bullshit. Um, he's not he, – there. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's good on the mic because he's not. But there is room for improvement. There's There's enough there to let you know that he's going to get better over time. He's going to get better over time. We saw it on Raw. But he was with Heyman. Anybody can look good with Heyman. So what, let's let him look good with Heyman right now. He needs a friggin' win after the goddamn Rumble. Anyone think about that? He needs a little bit of confidence. So what is wrong here? What, what's, what's the deficiency here? Everyone wants to rush to judgment. And it's possible that Roman Reigns gets booed out of every building that he goes to. It's quite possible that there's enough outrage. But I'm really starting to doubt it. Because the machine needs guys like this to keep it going. If there's just pure wrestlers like fucking Daniel Bryan, and no larger-than-life personalities, guess what you got, kids? You got Ring of Honor. And, wait, there's already a Ring of Honor? Is there already? Oh, there is already a Ring of Honor. And it's not lighting up the ratings. Oh, WWE's holding them back. No, because the people speak, and people go, and people draw, and people buy merchandise. And if people were banging down the doors for merchandise from Ring of Honor, and they were demanding to see more events from Ring of Honor, guess what? There'd be more television companies lining up to sign them. Especially right now, when signing wrestling television shows seem to be a popular thing. So popular that major television producers like fucking Burnett and goddamn major goddamn movie stars and movie directors like Robert Rodriguez are getting into the goddamn wrestling industry. There's a want for it. It's starting to build. We're getting into this uh, another age of wrestling where the boom is starting to happen again. I feel we're just a few years away from that. So you have all these things that that, that are building. Now, if the, all that were 100% true about what true wrestling fans want to see, which that's a debatable fucking concept to begin with because we all started somewhere, right, guys? We were all kids once. So if all that were true about true wrestling fans want Daniel Bryan and oh, we don't want these spectacles of John Cena and Roman Reigns, well, then fucking Ring of Honor would be taking over fucking WWE right goddamn now. The TNA's numbers would be way fucking higher than what they were. TNA, not TNA now, mind you. TNA from fucking five years ago. TNA from six, seven years ago. They would have instantly goddamn competed and buried WWE. But you know what? It's not true. You need guys like Cena. You need guys like Reigns. Hell, you need guys like Kali. The reason why WWE is the best wrestling company in the world is because of its variety, because it gives you something for everybody. And case in point, what does it look like we're getting now at WrestleMania now, kids? What does it look like we're getting? We're getting a pure, all-out wrestling match between Ziggler and Bryan. Now, what the hell is wrong with that? What the hell is wrong with that match? Oh, it's not the main event. Who cares if it's not the main event? Who cares if it's not the main event in this instance? There is no reason to think that Daniel Bryan is not going to get into the title picture over the next fucking uh, 8 to 10 to 12 months after WrestleMania. And, oh, wait, uh, Daniel Bryan, oh, it must be because Daniel Bryan's 41. Oh, wait, no, he's not 41. That's right. He's in, his, he's in his early 30s. That's right. So if he's healthy and he's able to go, that means he should be fine to be in next year's WrestleMania with a more established Roman Reigns and giving us a match that it might not be a detriment to his health like Lesnar probably would have been right now than wrestling a a match that would have been fucking hazardous to the long-term health of uh, Daniel Bryan. But we as wrestling fans are so goddamn selfish and so friggin' We're entitled that we're we're hardcore wrestling fans, and this is what we want. That we're gonna have it, and or we're gonna boo anybody else, and we're gonna take their spots away from them, and we're gonna force Daniel Bryan right back because the machine's wrong. Well, guess what, kids? The machine's not always wrong. The machine needs to be fed guys like Roman Reigns. 
They need to be fed guys like fucking John Cena. Why? Because it brings a variety that wrestling and other companies simply do not have. And it's that lack of variety that has kept those companies from reaching a mainstream status. That's reality. That's facts. Those are things that are out there. Now, are there other mitigating circumstances as well that has kept some of those companies out there? Absolutely. Because once again, multiple things can be true. Now, I'm sorry I'm a little ornery this morning. I'm sorry I'm a little bit uh, worked up. But there's these things that have been building in my mind. And it just it's driving me absolutely crazy. And I had to address them. Now, I understand this is not going to be the most popular uh, video in the world. But Jesus, you know, let's calm the hell down with all this hardcore wrestling fans and, and feed the machine and all this bullshit. Daniel Bryan's the... the Choice of the voice. No, that's not necessarily friggin' true. You put Daniel Bryan in there and you let him run with guys just like Ziggler and Rollins and nobody else and see what's going to happen to the WWE. It's okay to have a guy like Reigns who has been popular and over to have a run with the title. Let's see what we have in Reigns now. And like, like I've said also in the past, maybe there's something else here with the whole John Cena thing that we don't know. Maybe John Cena's close to retirement and they need somebody to take his spot now. It's not going to be Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's not the same attraction that John Cena is. And that's something else that you need to take into consideration when you're whining about your hardcore wrestling and all of that shit. These guys are attractions. It's not, it, it, there's no difference than fucking a circus. This, this is what this is. These guys are attractions. They are draws. And they have to be able to draw to a, ma to a mainstream population. You have to be able to hit as many of the fucking common uh, denominators as possible. And Daniel Bryan doesn't necessarily do that. But Roman Reigns can. All right? And maybe not now because the voice has spoken and they're not going to take... Roman Reigns, and they're going to boo him until they fucking bury this kid who's hardly had a fucking chance to begin with. It's bullshit. It's bullshit because when Reigns has been given a chance to shine, he has shined. And you know that it's true because you know what? We're the reason why Reigns is in this spot to begin with because we showed we liked Reigns. We showed that we were willing to accept this guy. And, and did WWE jump the gun and go a little bit crazy with it? Maybe. But do you blame him? Not fucking really. Not fucking really, I don't. Because you gotta feed the machine every now and then. And you act like there's no way that Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler are gonna have a career because Roman Reigns... Roman Reigns is gonna need people to fight after fucking Brock Lesnar. And I highly doubt they're going to go Roman Reigns and John Cena. Highly doubt that unless they're going to pass the torch. So let's think about that for another moment, shall we? Who's he going to be facing? He's going to be facing guys like Daniel Bryan. Is he going to be dropping the title to him? Maybe not, but maybe he will. Maybe, maybe Reigns is going to bury himself. So think about that next time that you're booing him out of a building before giving him a chance. Think, think of him. Think of that before you boom out of a building and turn your channel because it's not because he's not Daniel Bryan. Now I love Daniel Bryan just as much as anybody else, but I'm damn glad he's not fighting Brock Lesnar. And this David versus Goliath bullshit drives me absolute fucking crazy because it's risking his career at a point where you don't need to do that. You don't need to have that match. They wanted Reigns. They got Reigns. That's just how it is. So let's stop fucking going crazy here, shall we? Let's try to, uh, to take what we have and move the hell on because it's not all doom and gloom and negative. It's simply not. Multiple things can be true. That's all I got. Thanks for joining me right here on Dead on Dave Productions. Thank you for letting me vent this morning and get some, uh, get some stuff off my chest and uh, take my mind off my dearly departed... Little bunny, you've all been daved in the face. And I uh, hope you guys have a lovely evening. Good night, get some sleep, and dream of Daniel Bryan.
Peace.